Now we're ready to look at neuroregulation of blood pressure. That is looking at the baroreceptor reflexes and chemoreceptor reflexes and how they help in maintaining blood pressure. So first let's look at the baroreceptor reflexes. Again, these are good for short-term changes in blood pressure, such as maybe when you change position, like when you stand up, blood goes and sinks to your feet, so your pressure will decre decrease in your head. And so these are going to adjust that blood pressure back to normal. They're not going to be good for the long term. That's when we need the kidneys to adjust blood volume, and that's going to help with um, long-term changes in blood pressure. So these baroreceptor reflexes adjust cardiac output and peripheral resistance, and the receptors responsible for that are in the carotid sinus and the aortic sinus, and you can see those here. These are baroreceptors that are sensitive to changes in blood pressure, so they're located in that arch and in the carotid sinuses. The impulses that the those baroreceptors send are going to go up to the cardiovascular center in the medulla oblongata. These cardio, this cardiovascular center is consists of three different structures, one of which is the cardioacceleratory center, which we already looked at a little bit when we uh, talked about the heart, and that's because it affects the heart. It's sympathetic fibers that to the heart, and that increases heart rate and stroke volume. And you can see those fibers here running the normal kind of pathway for uh, sympathetic through that chain ganglia. And notice that the impulses from those sympathetic fibers hit both the SA node and the AV node. That's the part that's going to affect the heart rate. And then another branch out into the ventricles to the muscles themselves to help with increasing stroke volume. The cardioinhibitory center is parasympathetic fiber, so it runs through, of course, the vagus nerve. And notice it only attaches to the SA and AV node, therefore it's only going to decrease heart rate. The vasomotor center is another one um, that's going to adjust the blood vessel diameters, mostly in the arterioles. We see this with um, sympathetic control, so that these, and it's not pictured in here at all, but the uh, sympathetic fibers run out to the blood vessels and they always have the vessels partially constricted. So even when you're at rest, your blood vessels are going to be partially constricted. That's the vasomotor tone. And so then now all we have to do is either increase the number of sympathetic um, impulses going there and we'll get more vasoconstriction, or if we send less sympathetic stimulation, we get vasodilation. So I, that way I don't need parasympathetic to counteract what the sympathetic is doing. If it's just partially constricted, that's vasomotor tone. I'm going to constrict more, I get constriction. All right, send more impulse, I get constriction. Send less impulses, I get vasodilation. Since I'm affecting um, the diameter of the blood vessels, then that's going to be affecting resistance. Remember, the smaller the diameter or radius, the more resistance you have. So this baroreceptor reflex is a typical negative feedback type of reflex where you see, for example, on this slide, a rise in blood pressure is sensed by the baroreceptors in the carotid sinus or aortic arch, and that's going to end up stimulating the um, CIC to lower heart rate it's going to end up inhibiting the CAC to lower heart rate and stroke volume. Both those are then going to end up lowering cardiac output. It also sends impulses to the VMC and getting the VMC then to send less impulses to the blood vessels so you end up with dilation and then also you get venodilation and with a shift of blood to the venous side away from the artery side. So that way your blood volume on the artery side goes down. That means your blood pressure is going to go down. As well as having lower resistance and lower cardiac output is also going to end up, remember, lowering blood pressure. Remember, because it's cardiac output and resistance that end up um, affecting blood pressure. Or we can go the other direction. 
that is we have a decline in blood pressure again those baroreceptors are sensitive to that so then they're going to end up stimulating or causing the VMC to be stimulated and sending more impulses causing vasoconstriction the CAC is going to be stimulated to increase heart rate and force a contraction the CIC is going to be inhibited so it so the heart rate goes up both heart rate and stroke volume then increase cardiac output vasoconstriction leads to higher peripheral resistance both of those then are going to end up right um, increasing and that's going to restore blood pressure back to normal now the chemoreceptor reflexes are used in in the sense of when like say your muscles are actively being used so if there's an imbalance say a decrease in pH or oxygen levels or elevated CO2 levels in the cerebral spinal fluid so that we know systematically that is throughout their whole body there's a problem going on this isn't considered local or auto regulation kind of the uh, metabolite mechanisms that are triggered with auto regulation this is a systemic type of look at it if your blood pressure goes down you're not getting oxygen delivery to all your tissues or maybe you stop breathing and you're not getting oxygen delivery then you're going to have a, a decreased pH you're going to have low levels of oxygen you're going to have a buildup of CO2 in the cerebral spinal fluid those types of things then trigger these chemoreceptors to send impulses to a huge variety of things one is respiratory centers are going to be stimulated so you increase breathing rates which makes sense you want to try to get the oxygen delivery through the lungs also it's going to excite the CAC and inhibit the CIC thereby increasing cardiac output since I increase cardiac output I increase blood pressure those chemoreceptors are also going to lead to vasomotor center being stimulated to get vasoconstriction vasoconstriction also increases blood pressure so that way we deliver oxygen better to our tissues because our blood pressure is up we're going to be pushing the blood around better so if we have increased pH so that's going to end up increasing pH oxygen levels and decreasing CO2 levels in blood to get it back to normal so that ends this video lecture then on neural regulation of blood pressure. The next video will look at the hormones that are uh, in charge of regulating blood pressure.